Hello everybody and welcome back to In My Shed. I'm BC. First up we get this picture to try and get your attention. The original idea was to find a way to grind small drills that is reasonably simple. And I made it as complicated as hell and nothing worked out. So I had a bit of a think, if I've got this very simple large drill grinder, how could I adapt it? And how can you guys adapt it at home cheaply? That's the big thing. You'd, Unless you're grinding cutters like me, you don't want to buy collet chucks and squaring blocks and spend a lot of money. So I'll show you this setup first, and then we'll have to think about how we can do it easier and cheaper. So it's set up now uh, with a collet block, 5C collet block, in my big drill grinding attachment, which we'll look at later. And one of the hardest things to do is to set the lip of the drill in the horizontal plane so that you don't get wonky facets. And I'll see if we can zoom in and focus a bit. There I'm using the top of a squaring block that I use for milling slots in locomotive axles. And it's a reasonably square item. You could use a cylindrical square off the table to align the drill in the collet chuck. That way the lip is parallel to the table. It doesn't matter if it's parallel to the world or parallel to the wall. It's just got to be parallel to the table. And using this method you can get, I would say, within a degree, even on relatively small drills. That's a quarter inch drill, which isn't small, but if I use a 1 16th drill you wouldn't be able to see a bloody thing. So that's how I set it up to get the lip at the right angle. I'll change the setup and get back to you. Here's a different view of my dead simple large drill grinding jig. Just a bit of angle for a bracket to the table bit of angle and a bit of flat with a bolt for a pivot. So we'll see this in use later on. You can see the brass button in the front slot. I use that brass button to locate the flutes of drills up to about 25 millimeter and the bigger drills I move the brass button from where it is here. It can by the way be located up and down in the slot. For bigger drills I put it in here and that gives me ability to move along the slot and locate in the flute in a different angular position but I can get the flute of the big drill uh, square on. It's adjustable for angle and I usually use a clino with a little uh, bubble level in the back of it to get the angle and it's adjustable that way to get the edge angle on the drill using a well-known proven concept called a protractor. So it's fairly easy to set up. For this particular job I'm using a bit of flat, <coughs> which is a drill drift, inside there to give the squaring block a flat to locate into. If it located into the radius inside the angle, it wouldn't give you a true repeatability as you rotated the um, squaring block over and over. We'll put the drill back up and come in for a look again. Here it is with the base set at 30 degrees to the table using a protractor and using the clino to give me 10 degrees slope for the primary clearance. Very very simple setup, doesn't take long to do. And once set up uh, you only lose one angle when you sniss around to get the lip parallel to the table on the drill. When grinding that is placed on top of that bit of packing and brought up to contact the brass button. Then hold it tight against the side of the angle, grind one facet, move it over two flats, and grind the other facet. Now that would give you a pretty good repeatability within about one thou. And although I'm doing this the hard way and this doesn't fit very well, uh, we'll go back to the squaring blocks and see how it can be done a hell of a lot cheaper. But that'll give you an idea. Uh, you've all seen four facet drills being ground. Uh, this is just one method of it. I use a fairly hard wheel, the ruby wheel, because I find it less aggressive. The little drills just disappear if you use a sharp wheel. Oh, come up a bit, get a better picture. That's where they're assembled. Okay, we'll go back to the squaring box. Hello everyone, it's the old goat back again. 
Now we'll break this down into something that's cheap. This is a 5C uh, collop block, which is used for squaring. I've also got a hex block. I bought an adapter 5C to ER32 so that I can use my other collops in it. And in the front of that, I have a real good eBay find. It's an 11E chuck, or ER11 chuck, and it's got a quarter inch drill in it at the moment. I bought it with a set of that, a dozen collets, I think it goes down to 1.5 millimeter, so very, very good in size. 5.8 shank, and it cost me about $65 for the whole unit with collets. Really, really good buy. It's good for, good for using small cutters up close to an edge where you can't get the big chuck in. But you say, hell, all these items add up to a fair bit of money. But if you make a squaring block that that fits into, this one obviously is too big. Grind one side, grind the other side. Now, these squaring blocks were made originally for putting keyways into locomotive axles. That's how I square the wheels up. I put keyways in the wheels in the same position and I put key slots in the axles at 90 degrees to each other. And I find that if you use a squaring block like this, you're dead on. They're so easy to use. So these are axle sizes, but you can make them any size. You can use any block of steel, as long as you decide how many facets you want. Um, four for two and four, six for two, three. And um, very, very easy to use. And they drop straight into the old drill grinder behind me. So it's something that you can build at home. Everybody has a protractor. And these clinos are not expensive to buy. They're not overly accurate. You wouldn't set a propeller with that, but it's good enough for a little job like this. I use 10 to 12 for the primary and about 25 degrees for the secondary clearance. It seems to work reasonably well. Um, with the tool and cutter grinder, you can very accurately set your depth of cut to get the facets reasonably clean. But if you can't afford a tool and cutter grinder, it doesn't take much to put an adjustable stop on the front here. And even a 24 TPI screw gives you about 40 thou per turn. So you can infeed at 1 thou increments quite easily. You don't have to know whether it's 1 thou or 1 and a quarter or 3 quarters of a thou. You're just taking a little bit off the cutting tool to get it chuck. Hope this helps. Please like and subscribe. See you next week.